said, what a glory must be. Oppression 
and demotion and frustration and torment every spirit and every power that is not of God and not of Christ today in this place inside human being and the surrounding I command them to be destroyed in the name of Jesus of Nazareth Lord Amen. Father I decree today by the power in the blood of Jesus that every power claiming owners of souls and life that are not permitting souls to be free every spirit that are claiming ownership of the territory and the environment and the foundation of our land lord today i declare this to them let the lord that claim ownership of souls and life remove from the surface of the heart and perish under the heaven in the name of jesus Nazareth, lord Amen. thank you because you are the lord that changed it now in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen, amen. amen. and amen, amen. thank in you jesus, jesus. Encounter with the light. An encounter with the light. The devil is a liar. Amen. He tried that this world will be aborted today. Mm -hmm. But the Lord, the, the will of God has prevailed. Amen. An encounter with the light. An encounter with the light. I want to say it loud and clear. Encounter with the light. Encounter oh. with the light. Some people are still sluggish. Say, encounter with the light. Encounter with the light. Amen. Amen. An encounter with the light. Can you move forward, please? I want everybody move forward. Amen. An encounter with the light. An encounter with the light. Thank you, my young brother. God bless you. An encounter with the light. I want us to turn to the Bible right away without wasting more time. Psalm 119, I will read verse 130 to you. Psalm 119, verse 130 says, The entrance of the word gives light. The entrance of his word gives light. And it gives understanding to the simple. The entrance of the word of the law gives light and gives understanding to the simple. The entrance of the law, the word of the law brings light and understanding to the simple. An encounter with the light. An encounter with the light. This we are talking about the true light. And through him, every other light that has been made in this world and earth and heavens was made through the example of this light. The Bible says in the beginning. The Lord created heaven and the heart. After the heaven and the heart was created, everything, the Bible declares to us that the heart was without form and void, and the darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the face of the waters. And the Lord said, Let there be light, and there was light. And from this beginning, there has been light in the universe. And without light, nothing that was done was done. Every factory, every industry, every establishment operate today under light. If there is darkness, nothing can be done in the world. No business can prosper without light. Either the light of the night the electrical night of the night, or the light, power of the light that was given to us by, by, on the, by daytime by God. In the initial stage of light, there was no light. Everywhere was dark. But the Lord thought it wise that the light will come to the surface of the heart so that we can be distinguished between darkness and light. We'll be able to know with darkness and we'll be able to know light. We'll be able to choose the one that is better and preferred among the two. But today, I am talking about the encounter with the real light. I am not talking about electricity light or power. I'm not even talking about this current light you can see from the sky. But it's in relation to that. Whenever you look at the sky, like it's a, 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 a psalmist, a, some of our psalmist on heart says, Anytime I see another brightness of the day, I say thank you. Thank you, Lord. 
Whenever I see another brightness of the day, I say thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. So what that is saying to you, whenever you see this light, whenever day breaks and you see the light, you must begin to think about Jesus because Jesus is light. He is the power that gives light to humanity, to the heart, and to heaven. So we are talking about the encounter of the light, the real light. The Bible says, the entrance of your word. That was David there. The entrance of your word, I read it from verse 29, your, your testimonies are wonderful. Therefore, my soul keeps them. The entrance of your word gives light and it gives understanding to the simple. It gives understanding to the simple. The entrance of your word brings light and brings understand. It gives understanding to the simple. Now, first of all, when you enter the light, the, this word, you cannot discover the light or encounter the light except you enter the presence of his word. And when you enter the presence of this word, then you will get you will get what understanding as a simple. So I'll be willing to understand that as time goes forward. Entrance of his word brings encounter with the light. Entrance with God in the, into the God's word bring encounter with the light. Then it gives understanding to the simple. So today you begin to look at the true simple people. In other words, the true humble people, the people that have encountered the light, they are the simple and humble people. Simple people that have the simplest mind on heart, people that are humble people naturally. They are not humble because they are poor. There are some people that are humble because they don't have what they need. And as soon as they get what they need, they do what? They become wide and incontrollable. And there are some people also that are humble because they are looking for opportunity, opportunity and chances. So they have to pretend as if they are humble in order to get or grab those opportunities. Beggars are humble. Because if they are not humble, they will not be able to get what they need from the people that give offerings to them. Many people in the church today are humble because they are one after one thing or the other. But as soon as they get what they need, they become violent, high-minded, and they begin to oppose the same word that they used to love. So that is why the Bible says, if you encounter the true light, which comes by the hearing of the word of God, then you become simple. Because he only gives understanding to the simple. Understand it is one thing to enter the presence of the word of God. And it's another thing to have understanding to, as to how to live or walk with the word. Because the Bible tells us that the word of God is the Lord Jesus. Revelation 19 verse 13 reveals to us that the Lord, the word of God is what? Is Jesus. Even the Bible says, and he was with God in the beginning. Because when the Lord was creating those light and the animals and all the things that he created, he says, let us, when he got to a place, he said, let us make, and each of the time he said, let us do this, let us do this, let us do that. And he got to a place of making human beings, he said, let us make men in our image. In other words, God was not there alone. But the book of John chapter 1 reveals to us that Jesus was there. It reveals, John chapter 1 reveals to us clearly that Jesus was definitely and clearly at the formation of the word. Because it tells us that in the beginning was the word, which is Christ, according to Revelation 19, verse 13. And the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him there was light, and the life was the light of the world, and the light shines in the darkness, 
and the darkness did not comprehend it. Amen. Amen. Can you see that? So it was the light that the, when the Lord says, let there be light, he simply said, let there be revelation of the Son of God on the surface of the heart. And the revelation of the Son of God produces the light that we see in the day and every other light was made through his permission and authority. Amen. Amen. So the entrance of his word brings light and gives understanding to the simple. Now, when you see people coming to Christ, and today is Sunday, we are gathered in all churches of the world, all Christians. You see, and many people dress elegantly well, nice clothes, good cars, big churches, nice parking places, uh, nice parking places, and people who are parked and loaded in the church, but not many people have understanding of the word. Even though they pass through the corridor of the world, they see the flashing of the light, but they have not had encounter with the light. They have seen the ray of light. I want you to listen to me attentively because it's a mystery from the presence of God, the word that we are going to hear today. You can see the ray of light, but you might not have encounter with the light. You can see the traces of light because you are sitting in the corridors of his word. But you have not encountered with the light. Walking into the world does not give you encounter of the light. But the only the first step, he said, the entrance into his word brings what? Light and gives understanding to the simple. There is no one on heart that has had encounter with the light that has not been transformed. Because the presence of light sends away every iota of darkness. If you continue to read that, John chapter six, uh, chapter 1 that I just read, it says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came, I'm reading from John chapter 1, I'm now in verse 7. This man came to witness, to hear, to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the rule, that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to this his own, and his own did not receive him. But unto as many but as many as received him, he gave them right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name, who were born of the blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Amen. Amen. You see, that is the light, the Son of God. An encounter with the Son of God transforms your life. An encounter with the form of God. He is a word. He is a light. So David was actually saying that when you find Christ, you will have encounter with what? With light. And when you have encounter with the light, you will have understanding. Only if your mind is simple. Only if you are humble. Only if you have understanding of his word. I want to go quickly to the book of First John. First John in chapter one. First John chapter one. I'll read from verse five, verse five to seven. First John one five to seven. This is the message which we have heard from him. And declare to you that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. 
and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, that cleanses us from all sin. You see that? If we have, if we say, or we claim, we live in darkness, I mean in the light, and we actually in the physical walk in the darkness, that we lie, there's no truth in us. But if we have an encounter with the light, then every darkness of life must do what? Must give way to the light. We are in this building now. If this program was in the night and we were speaking in darkness, when you turn on the light, what happens to the whole environment? It becomes littered and darkness does what? Disappears immediately. So the entrance of his word brings what? Light. And it gives it gives, look at that. You enter the world, light is on, and it gives you what? Yeah. Understanding. But it now depends on you. The understanding is only useful for those that are humble in the mind. The understanding, what, I, what am I trying to say? If you have truly have encounter with God, with Jesus, in true and genuine repentance and salvation, your heart will be humble to hear from him. Your heart will be humble to get correction. Your mind will be simple to hear instruction. Because the word of God is a revelation. A written revelation that corrects, reproaches, reproves. That you can become what? Thoroughly equipped by the word of God. Amen. So that is what of God, what of God is. But when your heart is lofted, when your heart is, is not humble, when your heart is not simple, then it becomes useless to you. So there are many people in the church of God today. They only walk in the ray of the light. They have not had encounter with the light. Because when you have encounter with the light, you will be simple with every word of God that you come across. And it is except uh, unless you have become simple in the heart, the word become useless for you. And how do we know that? There will be sign over you. There will be results on your life. When the world, when you claim to walk in the light, and even though you are walking in the, in the darkness, he says there is no truth in you, and you lie, you deceive yourself. Because no one, what he's saying indirectly is that no one ha who is living in light has darkness anymore around him. No one living in light has darkness around him. We are still in the mystery. We are going on. I want every soul to be alert. If you feel sleepy, please, you are permitted to walk in the corners of the, of the auditorium. You, you, you may not walk outside, but in the corners. Don't walk in front of people in the corner so that, or stand in the corner so that you will not be sleeping. Because this is the entrance of his word. This is one of, the, one of the most serious messages to me in this year, 2017. Encounter with the light. The reason why we have dull churches, we have dull believers, we have dull ministers, we have dull bishops, we have adulterated gospel, is because the people that are peddling the gospel, people that are preaching it, they have no encounter with the, with the light of God. Believers have no encounter with the light of God. Sunday school teacher had no encounter with the light of God. Choirs have no encounter with the fire of God. Preachers have no encounter with the light of God. John 3, I'll read from verse 14 to 21. Not first John now, piece two of John. Chapter three, I will read from verse 14 to 21. It says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 18. He who believes in him, that is in Christ, will not be condemned. But he who does not believe in him is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the Holy Son of God. 19. And this is the condemnation. That the light has come. Now, for everybody, some people used to say, oh, don't condemn me. Any little thing, oh, you are condemning. All, all those messages of condemnation and reproach. We need to understand the meaning of condemn. Because that is, the, that is the, a kind of a, a, a protective or defensive word from most dull and adulterated, adulterated Christians. Immediately you are trying to correct something, oh, you are condemning me. What is the meaning of condemnation? He said, that is not the meaning of condemnation. He said, this is the condemnation. What is the condemnation? He said, this is the condemnation. That the light has come into the world. And the men loved darkness rather than light. Because their deeds are evil. 20. For every one practicing evil hates light. And does not come to the light. Lest his deed should be exposed or manifested. 21. But, the, the, but he who does the truth comes to the light. That is, these may be clearly seen. That they have been done in God. Amen. You see that? That is the condemnation. Whatever they call condemnation to you, say, oh, don't condemn. That is not condemnation. The condemnation is that Jesus Christ has come to the world. He is the light. And they refuse to have an encounter with him. And how does that happen? He says, when you, when all, when you are afraid to expose what you do in the secret, on the open. When you are not proud of some of the things you do that you cannot expose. If the Lord brings us a, a screen here today, a screen, and begin to show the content of your heart. On the screen here. Those things that you enjoy thinking about in your heart. Those things that you do in the secret that nobody is there. Those things that you manipulate. If the Lord begins to show it on the screen, can you be proud of it? Are you happy to see your content of your heart on your screen? Are you in control of the content of your heart? Because the heart is the problem. Your heart is the dark room of the picture. Your picture. I repeat that. Your heart is the dark room. When you want to produce a photograph, they bring it to the dark room. It must be dark before it comes out colorful. So your heart is the dark room of who you are. That is why the Bible says, guide your heart with what? Let me wake that brother. Amen. Amen. The Bible says you must guide your heart with what? All diligence. Because out of it produce what? The issues, the issues of your life. Amen. So in other words, your heart is truly the dark room of your life. So, this message is not to condemn. Messages of correction, they are not for condemnation. It is not condemnation yet. It is when you refuse to repent, that is when you are condemned. When somebody is speaking to you, say, brother or sister, this is not the way to go about this. They are not condemning you. It is just a statement of what? Advice. How can people call advice condemnation? I don't understand. This is what I call defensive word from unrepentant believers. Believers that don't want to repent, they always say, oh, don't condemn me. Oh, don't condemn me. It is not a condemnation. It's a statement of what? Reproof, re correction, and instruction in righteousness so that you can become complete, thoroughly approved by the word of God. Remember, the Bible says it is not for him who approves or, or marks himself right that the Lord has said, but he that the Lord approves himself. So therefore, if it is God that is going to be your marker, and you are the one, the candidate to sit for the exam, you must let the word of God 
justify you, not you yourself. Don't say, God, no, whatever the law says that I am. Don't prove yourself to say, I know that I'm just right. Let the word of God justify you. Let the word of God purify you. We have been purified daily by the hearing of the word of God and encounter, daily encounter with what? The son of God, the light. An encounter with the light. It's not a once in a while encounter. It's not once a lifetime encounter. It must be a daily encounter. Because when you have one encounter and uh, after three years you don't have another one, then you become weaker. Then darkness will begin to show up bit by bit, bit by bit, bit by bit, until they build out, they build up completely in order to take you away from the presence of the light completely. So this is the condemnation. That the light came to the world and people reject the light. They refuse to follow the pattern of the light. They create or created their own standard. And they don't want to follow the standard of the light. He who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already. This is the condemnation. That the light has come to the world. And the men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. For everyone practicing evil hates light and does not come to light, lest his deeds be revealed. Anyone that practices darkness, anyone that lives in sin, anyone that enjoys sin and does not want to repent in sin, they run away from a place of what? Darkness. I mean, they, they run away from the place of light. Because they know that when they sit down and you are preaching light to them, as soon as the light, they encounter light, the light brings out every of their evil deed. And the good news is that if they are willing to repent, then their life will be littered. But if they reject the light, then they will be condemned forever. So, I was thinking yesterday night, stroke this morning, I was just thinking and thinking, why would some people sit down in the church and just disappear? And when the pastor sit there, they say, I cannot just be in that kind of church. And you say, what is the problem? And they say, I can't just agree with you. Those kind of words just trouble me. I cannot just agree with those kind of words. They are too strong for me. They are just too strong for me. And you hear another one. They come once in a while and they disappear. When you come to them, they say, why? What is happening, brother? Even those people that call the same minister, so-called individual private minister, and you ask them, ah, you don't come to our program, you don't show up, they say, the Bible says you should not be over-righteous. You people are over-righteous in that place. What is the meaning of righteous? I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't understand. So I, I, I came to realize that as I was coming to church today, I was thinking, I was full of thought. To the extent that I even forgot some things in the house. I was thinking, I said, why would people... And this disease used to be... It has become very big. It's no longer with small people. Then I was thinking, how do we now have the whole world and congregation that we see and come across to actually see and have encounter with this light? How can we do that? This is looking like an impossible mission. It's only Christ himself that can do that. Because this, this disease has affected the whole church of the world. The, the disease is, is dwelling in everywhere. People only like to hear the messages of how they can remain more in darkness and prosper and have money. They don't want to have an encounter with the light. They don't care about light. And that is why you see there is the, 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 the presence of God in churches have reduced. Because people no longer have passion to encounter light. They don't, have a, they don't longer have zeal to encounter. Look at what David said in that place. I want to go back again to the book of Psalm. And I want you to look at it deeply and, and understand what a man David was. In the, in the verse 31 it says, I opened my mouth and panted, for I long for your commandment. Can you see that? I opened my mouth and panted. Oh. There is a song that says, Has thou there panted for 
The world has lost my soul. The light in you. You are God and my heart. Desire, Lord, I love to worship you. It says, I open my heart. But 131, I'm reading. I opened my mouth and panted and longed for your commandment. David was a great king. He was a rich king, successful. And he still had, he still had plans. He still had, his heart is full of God. Desire God to see God. To have an encounter with the king of kings. To have an encounter with the light of God. So my heart pants to obey your commandment. 129 says, the, your testimony are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. He's talking about God. What is he saying? The testimony of what I hear about you. I see the stars, the moon, the heavenlies, the light that cannot be compared with every other light made by man. The light of the day. Look at the brightness of the day. Can you, can you quantify any power of light? Can you compare any electricity made by man with the light that you see in the world? Even when the light of the sky shines, the light, electricity that is made by man disappears. You cannot look at it now. It, it looks like, look at the power of the light from outside, from the sky. It makes the light, electricity that we have here powerless. David said, when I look at those are your testimonies. I look at all the things you are. I look at all what you have created. I look at the man that you have made. How great thou art. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sing my soul, my Savior Lord. To thee, how great, how great thou art, how great thou art. That's what David was saying. He said, I look at all your testimonies around me in the wind that is blowing. They are blowing gently through the breeze and the trees. Then I see these testimonies. Then I do what? My soul keeps them. My soul keeps them. So an encounter with the word brings encounter with what? The light of God. If you are reading the word or hearing like a news, you are listening to a journalist reading on the TV, or you are reading like a novel in your hand, you have not entered the word. Because when you enter the world with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your spirit, then you begin to see light. And the light humbles you. The light does what? Humbles you. To begin to, it is when the light humbles you that you begin to put the world into practice. If the world, if you have not encountered, let me see, speak to you quickly. Anyone that has not encountered the light cannot obey the word of God. Our Sunday school teacher was saying today about the purpose of church. That church is a place where you go to change. You hear the word of God to change you. The reason why you see people go there every day and they don't change is because they have not had encounter with the, with the light. The day Saul, the former Saul that became Paul, encountered the light on the way to Damascus. The Bible says the light was too strong that it had to blind, it blinded the eyes of Saul. The light on his body was so strong that the, the, uh, the height of Saul could not see again. And as from that until the end of the earthly ministry of Apostle Paul, he became successful for the rest of his life. He wrote the, the, the highest epistle in the Bible. Because he encountered what? The light, you cannot encounter the light and the life remain the same unless you have been seeing the ray of light. When I met the Lord, He changed my life, He changed my heart, and He changed my look. That's why I know it's the Lord that lives in me. When I met the Lord, He changed my life, 
He changed my heart and he changed my world. That's why I know is the Lord that lives in me. How could you make the Lord without changing your life? How could you meet the light without changing your world? Oh, when I met the light, it changed my life. It changed my heart and it changed my world. That's why I know it's the Lord that lives in me. Amen. When you meet the light of God, it will change everything in you. It will transform you. You become a new person. People that go to church and their lifestyle does not look like it has changed. How can you go into the light and come out with darkness? It is impossible. When you go into the light, you come out with fire. Amen. Amen. You don't come out again with darkness. When you see Christians going to the church and coming out every day and continuing in darkness, in light, in darkness, in light, they have not had encounter. They have not entered his word. Because the entrance of his word does what? Brings light. And it gives. Light is brought. But understanding is given. Life is brought. Understanding is given. The entrance of his word brings what automatically when you enter the light turns on. There are some security lights around building when you go around the house the light will be on, isn't it? Have you seen anybody seen that kind of light? It's a security light. When you walk, when people come around the house the light will just be on. That's what I'm talking about. When you enter the word of God with seriousness and zeal and passion, like David says, he says, my heart and my heart does what? Pants. When, when your heart is panting to hear the word, then the light just turn up. But when the light is on, then understanding is given to you. Whoa. When the understanding comes to you, you become what? Umbu. Gi. And you are completely broken. People that have not passed through that process, those are the people you call safe but unbroken. Born again but unbroken. Because they have not encountered with the light. You need to encounter this process that I told you for you to be a broken and complete Christian. Because God has, that's what they call the language of brokenness. It will break to remove you. That's what they call brokenness. It will break who you used to be. He's a, he's a porter. You had a porter. Ah, my love. Oh, Lord, hold me as you desire. He is the potter. You are the clay. When you enter his word and you encounter the light, you are the word, you are given understanding, then understanding breaks you. And when you are broken for who you used to be, then the Lord will mold you into what you want you to, to be. Amen. Amen. That's the process. That's the process. That's the process. We need to have encounter with the light. We need to have encounter with what? The light. Let's turn our Bible to Matthew chapter 5. As we are going to the end of the message. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew 5. Matthew chapter 5. I will read 13 and 14. Matthew 5, 13 and 14. Yes, read for me, brother. You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the heart. But if the salt loses its flavor. If the salt is what? Loses its flavor. How shall it be seasoned? How shall it, shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing. It becomes but, useless. But thrown out and trampled on underfoot by men. Yes. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. A city that is set upon the hills cannot be hidden. Amen. Amen. When you encounter the world, that's why the book of 1 John in chapter, chapter 1 says, when you claim to have relationship or fellowship with the light, and you live what? In darkness, there is no truth in you. Because if you have fellowship with the light, amen? amen. If I have a coal, a fire, how many people know coal here? You have a coal, 
that is very red in fire. Then I put another coal or two other coals to join them. Then I begin to blow. What happens to them? They begin to catch fire too. And they become red like the first one. So that is what I'm talking about. When you have fellowship with what? The light, you become what? Light yourself. And in you, there will not be any darkness at all. When he say in you, he's talking about your heart. Because your heart produces the things you do in the body. When your heart still corrupt, when your heart is still corrupt, or your heart is still full of darkness, then there is no light in you. But that is not the condemnation. The condemnation, condemnation is, it is given unto you today to choose to repent or to choose to be condemned. It is given unto you today to choose to be corrected or to choose to remain in darkness. Because the Bible says, those that whose their work are evil, they are afraid to go where there is darkness. I mean, where there is light. Because the light will expose what? Their works. And their works will make them ashamed. But you should not be ashamed that your work is exposed. You should not be exposed. You should not be ashamed that your works are revealed when you go to a place of, uh, of light. You are only ashamed and live because you don't want to repent. Amen. People that want to be repent, that want to repentance, that want true repentance, they don't run away from the place of light. They only stay and say, God, I need to change. This is not the way you want me to live. I want to be joined with these people here so that I can become light like them. Because, guess what? If you don't become light like the people that you find in the church, you will run away one day. Is that true of us? You will run away. Because the more you stay in that congregation, the more you see yourself as if you don't wear clothes. I remember a sister that told us once in, in Ireland, in the church in Ireland, that she didn't come again, so I, I looked for her, we went to her, and she said, Pastor, whenever I am in your congregation there, I feel like I, I'm not wearing clothes. I don't know whether the, that, was that the way she said it? Or she, yeah, she said she felt naked in the church. That she was always feeling, yes, she always feeling that she's the worst sinner there. Then I told her that day, I said, see, I don't see any reason why you should feel that you are the worst sinner unless you are, you are actually a sinner. And that is, just, that is actually the truth. You cannot be feeling that you are the worst sinner in our congregation when you are not actually a worst sinner. I said, sister, so is there anything that you want to share with us that you are doing that make you feel like that? Because you can only feel like that. You can only feel that you are in darkness, inside light, if you are actually darkness. Why are you feeling like that, sister? And she began to speak out some of the things that she is doing. And I said, okay, that's the reason why you feel like that. But if you can repent, that is not the condemnation. But the condemnation is if you refuse to repent. That's the condemnation. So anybody that says, don't condemn me, that is not condemnation when we tell you how to repent. But the condemnation is if you choose not to repent, is the condemnation. But for we to tell you what your problem is, is not condemnation. We are just bringing your attention to what you are doing. You might not see. Do you know some people might be doing something they might not know? People might actually be living in sin that you will not notice it. But when you help them to bring it to their, na to their notice, they must... Especially, listen, especially when that thing is written in the Bible, you need to, you need to give it a thought. Don't, don't just say, ah, these people are just jealous of me. Oh, they are just jealous of my anointing and my gift. No. You must give it a thought. Say, am I really like this? You can go and ask somebody that you trust most. Everybody have some trusted people. Go and ask the people, say, this is what I heard about me. Do you think that's the way I am? If those people want to tell you the truth, they are not getting money from you to eat. They will tell you the truth. Say, I think, that, I think these people are right. Then you, if, they, if you have two people confirming you, three, you need to go and repent. That is, it, that is the God speaking to you indirectly about your repentance. So you should not joke. Don't joke. Don't joke. Don't joke. Don't joke with hellfire. Because if you don't encounter the light of God here on heart, eh? listen to me. If you don't encounter the light of God here and there to walk with the light, you will be forced to receive fire in hellfire. Anybody that rejects the light will be forced to hellfire. Anybody that rejects the light on, on heart will be forced to go and receive fire in hell. 
is either you receive the light or you receive fire of hell. Because the entrance of his word brings light. And when you receive the light, then it shows that you have met Christ. That's what 1 John was telling us in chapter 1 from verse 5 to 7. It shows when you begin to behave like the light, it shows that you have truly have an encounter. When Apostle Paul went back to Jerusalem, the people did not believe him. Some people were running away from him. But he was trying to tell them, I have encountered the light. I am now, I have now seen what you have seen. I have now know the reason why you preach like that. I can no longer kill you because I am now a light. Then people began to believe him. They began to trust him. And it became what? It became light indeed. You see? So when you encounter light, you don't behave in darkness anymore. It is no longer possible unless you have not encountered light. You have just been seeing the ray of light. People that go to church and sit down elegantly with dressing and go home and never change, they have not had encounter with light. They have not seen the light or know him. That's what the Bible says. It's not what I said. Maybe we should read it again. In 1 John chapter 1, let somebody read 6 and 7 again. 1 John chapter 1, I want you to move close to me when you are reading. A brother, move to me and come and read here. 1 John chapter 1, 6 and 7, what does it say? And I want somebody else to turn to that John 3, verse 20 and 21. 1 John 6, verse 7. 6 and 7. Yeah. If we say that we have fellowship with him. If we say we have fellowship with him. And walk in darkness. And walk in darkness. We lie. we lie. And do not practice the truth. And we don't practice the truth. But if we walk in the light. If we walk in the light. As he is in the light. As he is in the light. We have fellowship with one another. We have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from what? All sin. God is light. In him there is no darkness. John 3, 20 and 21. John 3, 20. Yes. For everyone practicing evil. Everyone practicing evil hates light. And does not come to the light. They don't come to the light. Lest his deeds should be exposed. So that their deeds will not be exposed. But he who does the truth. Anyone that practices righteousness, comes to the light. they always come to the They are not afraid to go to a, church, a Bible believing Holy Ghost free church. They don't run away. That his deeds may be clearly seen. So that you can be seen that you have nothing to hide. That they have been done Whoa. in God. That you have been cleansed totally in God. You see, so when you are in the light, you are not afraid to sit down in this kind of congregation because you have nothing to hide. And guess what happened? When you have things to hide, you begin to struggle. And believe me, you cannot struggle too much in this place and you run away. Because this is a place of practical Bible living. You, there is not a place for hypocrisy. If you practice hypocrisy, you will not be able to balance. Because you will not be able to be, you will not be able to be suited here. Hypocrisy cannot dwell before the Lord. You will struggle, and after struggling, it's just looking for a way out to run away. But guess what? If you are ready to walk with the Lord, this is the best place to be. Because when you walk with the Lord, in the light of his word, what a glory he shines on your way. When you do his doing, he'll abide with you still. And that you will reward, trust and obey. Trust him, trust and obey. There is no other way. To be happy in Jesus. And the trust and the Amen. Amen. Let us go to the book of Acts quickly as we're rounding up. Acts of Apostle, chapter 2. Acts 2, I will read from 44 to 46. Acts chapter 2, I will read from 44 to 46. To 47. He says, now all who believed, let me read it from verse 42 so that you can understand what they are talking about. I want to listen to this. I want to see the people that have encountered light, how their life was. 
Because this, this, is the beginning of, this is the beginning of the gospel. It was the beginning of the gospel. And this is what the Bible said we must build on. The, the, upon the foundation of what? The apostle and of Jesus. That's where we must build every living church on. You don't build it upon your foundation of your father and mother. Or the foundation of your custom and tradition. Gospel is built upon the apostle and upon what? Jesus, who is the foundation of the gospel. If you begin to do your own thing and preach your own thing, then you are preaching and doing it under the foundation of your custom and tradition. Look at what he said. The people that have encountered fire, the first fire, after they received the Holy Ghost, what happened to them? It says, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. In which doctrine? The doctrine of their father, no. their village, no. their tradition, no. their custom, no. or their degree on PhD. No. no! The gospel of the doctrine of the of the doctrine of the apostle and fellow and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers. 43. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. 44. And now all who believed were together and had all things in common. You see that? They have all things in common. Today, everybody that the body of child don't have anything in common. I can say it boldly. CSC don't have anything in common with the deeper life. Deeper life have nothing in common with the redeem. Redeem has nothing, nothing in common with the, with the glory house or victory house or porter's house or every ministry you see. Everybody have their patterns. Why? Because they build their churches and ministry upon the foundation of their custom, of their tradition, of their, of their tradition, of their degree that they acquire in school and their life experiences. They refuse I am not saying there are no churches that are building on the foundation of Christ, but what I'm saying is that it is one over 100 church. One in 100 churches are actually building upon the foundation of Christ. A lot of other churches, they don't care. We don't have anything in common. How can a church not have anything in common? You see some people, they'll come, they say, oh, I cannot worship with you. Your own is different from what I believe. Haven't you had that kind of thing before? Yeah. I, I'm a Christian, but I don't have belief. I don't share your belief. How can that be? Even the worst, the Bible says, if, the, if, the, the, uh, if our righteousness does not exceed that of the Pharisee and Sadducee, we cannot enter the kingdom of God. Most of the people that go to church, their righteousness does, is not different from Muslim or idol worshippers because the Muslim be, they behave better. They have everything in common. They have what? Majority of them have everything in common. Muslim can park here and enter another mosque to pray. Yeah. Is that true or false? Yeah. A Muslim can come from Canada and come to Ireland and go to that mosque there to go and pray. But a Christian cannot go. He will stay in the house. My church is not here. I don't believe what they preach here. I have my own church and my own doctrine. Why? Because we don't have anything in common. We are different. We don't deceive ourselves with songs, with praise. Whenever there are, there are concerts where we can have, that have our interest. When the man of God have his interest, he brings his member there. When he does not have his interest, he tells his member, don't go there. I don't want to see you there. You see, because we, we, we preach differently. This is not the gospel Jesus left. This is not the light of God. The light of God unites nations. The light of God brings people up. Light in America is not different from the light in England. Light in England is not different from the light in Africa. Light in Africa is not different from the light in Dubai or Pakistan or, or Qatar or India. It's the same light, universal light. But is the kind, Jesus also is universal, but the way people preach Jesus Christ is not universal. He's different. He's, he's segregational. He's, div he's divisional. It's not united. The Bible says here, and all, then fear came upon them. Look at it, 43, say, uh, 44. Now all who believed were together in unity. They did all things in common. They preached the same Christ. They preached the same, they do the same baptism. The same Holy Ghost. The same power. The same foundation. The same heaven. The same salvation. The same belief. The same faith. The same grace. Now grace is preached differently. Salvation is preached differently. Belief is preached differently. And we have different body of Christ. And it makes some people have choices because we're now, we are now in varieties. Churches now varies. We have varieties of churches. So people now begin to choose according to their spices and delicacy. They choose according to 
Yes, let me check. I don't like that place. Yes, <laughs> this is my choice. These people, they, they make it soft and easy. Now they soft better in their preaching. Let me just get here. That's where I want. Because we are not the same. We are not united. People make choices. And they crowd, they overcrowd where the truth is not defined. They overcrowd where they cannot encounter with the light. An encounter with the light is needed before you depart from this world. Otherwise, there will be big surprise at the end of the road. There will be big surprise in the other side of the water when you leave this world. Don't be caught in the web of that surprise. You must be encountered with the light before you leave this world. Let me continue what it says. 45, it says, And they sold their possession and goods and divide them among all, as everyone had need. 46. So, continuing daily. How many days? Daily, with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. Can you see that? They ate their food, which means they, they, they are satisfied with everything that the Lord has given unto them. They didn't look for deliverance that they are not, they are, they, from trouble they don't have. Today, somebody has one house, he thinks he needs deliverance because he doesn't have ten. Somebody has a job, he thinks he needs deliverance because he's not director. Somebody has money, he thinks he needs deliverance because he wants to become a millionaire. And the father's house does not want him to become a millionaire. I am not saying there, must not, there are not deliverance cases, but what I'm saying is that we are overdoing it. There are situations that need you to change your character than deliverance. If you behave like the people of your father's house, you have the power, you will have the trouble of the people of your father's house. But if you repent from the people, the character of the people of your father and mother's house, you will not have their problem. That's just simple as that. They share their bread with simplicity. So therefore, they did not have problem of their father or their mother's house. Or did you hear that all of them, at least they were idol worshippers too? Because most of us are saying, because my father was idol worshipper and my mother, therefore I need deliverance. These people were idol worshippers. Is that true of us? They worship idol. They do everything. Have you ever heard that the children of God were condemning deliverance for them? For poverty? Eh? No. It's in our generation we have special deliverance for poverty. Because we are not satisfied. We are not simple in the mind. We are not, we don't have hope in God. Everything you want to be, it's been done on the cross for you. Seek first what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every other thing will be done unto you. Because you do not seek the kingdom of God and you are seeking every other thing, that is why you are subjected to deliverance and running around everywhere. When you seek, he didn't say you just sit down. He said you must seek it, which means with all your passion, with all your mind, you must walk into the world and let the entrance of the world bring you what? Light and gives you understanding and you make you simple to receive every word to grow. If your mind is not simple, and you are not humble, you cannot be taught by anybody to grow. You would think you have grown and big when you are not actually nothing. That is why the Bible says in the book of Romans that you must, nobody must think himself to be highly more than they ought to be. Submit yourself. I remember there was a, a, a ministry that I, I joined. I was there for a few, some years until God gave us this calling. Nobody knew what I was before. At least you children can, my children can testify, and my wife. Nobody knew that I was actually preaching anywhere in Africa before. In all the seven and a half years that we spent there. Because I was submitted to hear new things. I was submitted to grow. They were just hearing rumors. Some of them come and say, ah, we had in, they say in 2000 you organized, you were actually preaching in the one hotel, and even you wanted to become a church. Later on, people joined other churches. I say, yes, yeah, that was true. And I did not even begin to beautify that statement. Because it was not important for me. What is important for me is that to learn more where God has created me. You need to be simple-minded and to be humble in order to learn more, to be grown and bigger. When you get to a place where you need to learn and you begin to become boss, you will not learn anything and you will become failure. Because the purpose of bringing you to anywhere is to learn, to grow, to add more to what you have already learned somewhere. Because of that humility of seven and a half years in that ministry, I was able to balance what God has called me into. It has become balanced. 
But if I did not allow that to happen immediately, I joined and begin to say, Oh, I prophesy and declare. And then, you know what I was? I was a minister. I was a... Then they will push me into one duty quickly. And that duty they give me, we, we do what? We destroy what God wants to do. So you need to allow God to work on you. Because when you walk into the world, you encounter the light, and the gift, the light gift to you that is needed for you to grow is what? Understanding. That brings you what? Humility. Because the entrance of the world will bring you light, and the light will break you. In order for you to understand. If it doesn't break, you will not understand. And when it breaks you, you as I understand, then you begin to remove you into a new creature. A new creature. Look at the people. They gather here and they become what? Simplicity of heart. They were simple in their dressing. They were simple in their talk. They were simple in their dealing. They were simple in their understanding. They were simple in the issues of life. And they were able to live in harmony. People that are not simple, they don't live in peace and harmony. They live in disaster. They live in gossip in the church, backbiting in the church, fighting in the church, adultery in the church. Whatever they had, they were satisfied with it. That's what the Bible says. They, were, they, 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 were, they took all what gave them with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. Can you see that? They were praising God and having, because of their character that is good, integrity, holiness, all prime. The Bible said they have favor in front of everybody. You will see a Christian say, eh, because I have color, that's why they don't like me. I'm a colorful person. It's because you don't have good character. It's not your color. If you have good character, they will choose you over any white. Eh, yeah, somebody, I saw a sister called me sometimes ago. It was not a member of our church. Say, Pastor, I just wanted to, I want to come to you to pray for me. And she came. He said, I'm in my place of work. They, my supervisor just hates me without passion. Uh, in fact, I'm just tired. And the job I've been there for five years. And... Uh, I don't want to leave. I want you to pray. He want me to, she wanted me to pray to, for God to fire the supervisor. I said, my sister, I me, mean, I don't pray that kind of prayer. But tell me what happened. Did you meet the supervisor there or the supervisor met you there? Because you are supposed to be light in that place. Because the Bible, we, we saw it in the Bible now. But the Bible said they were having favor from every man and woman. Not among themselves, but even people, unbelievers. Because of their character, because they have encountered the light. When you encounter light, everybody will like you. Everybody will like your character. When they're looking for somebody to solve problems, they will look for you. So I, I had the sister, how was your relationship when you started working there? She said, I actually met her there. Five years ago, she was already there. I said, then what happened? He said, yeah, we're working, but I said, when did your problem start? He said, he started just recently. I don't know what she has seen in me. Then I told her, I said, sister, can I tell you the truth? When you got that job, you needed money. You needed a job, that kind of job, because it was a very good job. You needed that kind of hospital job. You were very happy to get the job. So you were behaving, I know African people, you were behaving like Mumu to everybody there. You were running around. Whenever they call you one time, you run three times. Everybody likes you because you are at everybody. You run at anybody back on call. You run, you go everywhere, you humble, you are doing everything, you are humble to everybody. But after working five years, you are now have money. And now, at least after five years, you have now become Irish citizen too. They gave you citizenship. Now there is every reason to be changing color, isn't it? And to change your style. Now your style is changing, and your color is changing, and the mind of those people about you is not changing. Can you, do you listen to me? The people, the way they know you has not changed, but you are changing. That is what is bringing into trouble. Because they believe you are now getting arrogant. You are now changing for who you used to be. Before they call you, you answer. Now you are saying that, ah, you can't call me like that. I have also belong in this place. I know my way around. Then when you do like that, there will be fight. It's not, as to a sister, he doesn't need prayer. He needed to change to where you used to be. Go back to who you used to be. No matter how long you have stayed there, be humble more. The way, look at the way you started. Then begin to live like that. You will see they will begin to love you again. Because if you have produced yourself to be arrogant, immediately you start to walk, they will know who that's who you are. But you behave humble, and now you not change arrogant, and you want them to still like you, it's not possible. The children of God always have favor wherever they go, because they are the light of the world. And they are the, they are the salt of the heart, and they are the what? The light of the world. Because they have met light, then become light, and they acquire, obtain favor from all men. They obtain favor. Let's see the last one in the book of Acts again. Acts chapter 4, I'll read from the last three 
verses, Acts 4. I read from 32 to 37 now. He said, Now the multitude of those who believe, again, were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the only of the things he possessed was his own, but they, they had all things in common. And with great power and apostles, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see that the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our apostles nowadays, are they giving witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus or they are giving witness to acquire power of money? To acquire sources, to acquire victory, to acquire deliverance, to acquire healing. The apostles have power to do healing, but that was not the ultimate. The apostles have power to bless people. That was not the ultimate. The apostles have power to do deliverance. That was not the ultimate. The ultimate was they witnessed the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and is coming back to the heart. All healing, miracle, deliverance, they are just minor by the way. We still going to do that. But let us focus on the purpose of our calling, which is to speak about, to, to preach the Christ, which came, died, resurrected, and went to heaven, and is coming back one day to take every soul. That is the purpose of the calling. That is the purpose of his death. We should not focus on the gift, but focus on the giver. When you focus on the, give, on the gift, you will not have encounter with the giver. But when you focus on the giver, you will have encounter with him and you enjoy all the gift. Amen. Amen. Now, he says, verse 34, Nor was there anyone among the seven who lacked. For all who, were, all who were possessors of land or houses sold them and brought the proceeds to the things that we, of the things that, that, that were sold. 35. And they laid them at the apostles' feet, and they distributed to each as everyone had need. And Joseph, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is a translated, translated son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyrus, having land, sold it and brought it to the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Amen. Amen. These are people that have encountered fire. They have encountered light. When you encounter light, it changes your mind. The more you get closer to him, the more you get humbled and reduced in, in size and in volume and in the condition of your heart. You will get broken more. This light will mean more to you. Things will no so longer be important to you in this world. All what will be important is for you to just be in his presence all the time. An encounter with the light. I want you to stand up on your feet today. I want to shout, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I want to have an encounter with you today. This week, Lord. Today, Lord. Lord, I want to have an encounter with you. Encounter of transformation. Encounter of renewal of soul, of spirit, of, of strength. In the name of Jesus. Father, today, Lord, encounter me, Lord. You are the fire, and you are the light. You are the word of God. I want to have an encounter with you today. For the Bible says the entrance of your word brings light and, and gives understanding to the simple. Father, Lord, I want to have an encounter with you today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Encounter of salvation. Encounter of deliverance. Encounter of holiness, encounter of integrity, encounter of renewal of mind, encounter of transformation of life. I want to have an encounter with you, Lord. Father, Lord, coming to me today. Father, transform me, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.